Hello everyone and welcome back to our 30 day study challenge. We are at day 15 and whether you're jumping in right today or you've been with us the whole time, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. Today we're gonna be talking about genetics. We're gonna be doing a brief content overview and then doing some practice problems at the end. Let's get started. So let's take it way back. Mendel was the person that deduced that genes come in pairs and are inherited as distinct units from one parent. He tracked the segregation of parental genes and their appearance in the offspring as dominant or recessive traits. He also recognized the mathematical patterns of inheritance from one generation to the next, and he created laws of heredity. Mendel did a lot of great work in his experiments, and they took about eight years to complete. He published his work in 1865, but unfortunately he wasn't really recognized or thought of as important until after his time. We know that he worked with over 10,000 different pea plants during his experiments, and he took meticulous results, recording down all of his data by hand. All right, and if you have to memorize Mendel's laws, an easy way to remember them is pretend that at the monastery, Gregor Mendel, who was a monk, had a nickname named Sid. I don't know why, it's just part of the story. But Sid will help you remember the three main laws that he came up with segregation, independent assortment, and dominance. A gene or genes are pieces of DNA that determine your traits. An allele is just a different form of a gene. If we're writing out genetics problems, this might be written as a big B or a little b, for example. A recessive gene can be masked by a dominant one, and a dominant allele can mask a recessive one, Often dominant alleles are represented by capital letters. A genotype is the actual combination of alleles that somebody has. A phenotype are the physical characteristics that come from that genotype. So for example, your physical characteristic could be tall. That's your phenotype. Homozygous is when we have an allele pair that has two of the same allele. So for example, a little a, little a, or a big A, big A. Heterozygous is when we have two different alleles together in one genotypic pair. For example, big A, little a. So some basic review for Mendelian inheritance. This is our classical dominant recessive type of inheritance. Remember that genes are often represented by letters and different versions of genes could be capital or lowercase let letters. So here we see the trait for this axolotl. Um, the color of their skin is either gonna be pigmented, so this dark color, or uh, without pigment, so this albinal axolotl. And to represent these different versions of these traits, we have uh, letters that are going to be different alleles. So the pigment allele will be a big A and the albino allele will be a little a. Now each organism has a genotype. These organisms have two genes for a particular trait. So this albino axolotl is homozygous recessive, meaning it has two little a's. So little a, little a would be this axolotl's genotype, but it's Phenotype, its physical characteristic for the trait is albino. That's the color. So remember, phenotype, physical characteristic. Genotype is the actual combination of alleles or genes. Now, this pigmented axolotl could be one of two genotypes. It could either be big A, big A, homozygous dominant, or it could be big A, little a, because this big A is dominant over the recessive allele, and it's going to mask or cover up the effects of this recessive gene. So when we see a pigmented axolotl, it could be either one of these genotypes, but both of these genotypes will give us the pigmented phenotype. All right, so let's take a look at a practice problem involving these and our tool, the Punnett square. So let's say we have two pigmented axolotls that are both heterozygous, meaning they have one big A and one little a, and they are going to mate. We can use things like a Punnett square to see what the chances are of their offspring either being albino or having pigment. So in this case, instead of a Punnett square, we would take one parent and put it on the top of the Punnett square, separating out their alleles or their letters. We would take the other parent and separate that out their alleles or letters as well. And then what we do is we drop down all our letters and we fill in the Punnett square. So this big A gets dropped down here and here. This little A gets dropped down here and here. And this big A gets dragged over here. And this little A gets dragged over here. So now we have the results of our Punnett square. We can see that there's a 25% chance of having offspring that will have a homozygous dominant genotype, meaning big A, big A, a 50% chance of having offspring that will have the heterozygous genotype, so big A, little a, and a 25% chance or one in four chance of having little a, little a, or homozygous recessive. Now, 
That's a lot of words. What does that mean? So these three combinations here, big A, big A, or big A, little A, big A, little A, that would all mean this axolotl has pigment or is a dark color because A is dominant over little A. So we have two copies here. It doesn't really matter. Here we have one copy of the dominant trait. So it's going to be dominant over the albino trait. An axolotl with little A, little A though, that genotype means it doesn't have any pigment because it has two copies of the recessive allele. All right, let's get into some practice. Today's practice is not multiple choice. It's going to be some fill in the blank. You might want to get some scratch paper out to work on those Punnett squares. Let's do it. All right, for each of the genotypes below, indicate whether it's heterozygous, meaning two different alleles, or homozygous, meaning two of the same allele. Should be pretty easy. You can do it in your head or pause the video and do it on paper. Here we go. All right, so I'm not going to read all of these out loud. You can check your answers here, but I'll do a few of them to go through. Remember, big T, big T, that's homozygous, and technically we call it homozygous dominant to have two dominant alleles. Big B, little b is heterozygous. We have two different alleles, one dominant, one recessive. And then let's find this little t, little t here. That is also homozygous, but we call it homozygous recessive since both the alleles are recessive. All right, let's keep moving. Determine the phenotype for each genotype using the information provided about the organisms. So I want you to tell me what the phenotype is, what their physical characteristic is based on the information provided and the genotypes. Ready? Big Y, big Y is yellow because it's two dominant alleles. Big Y, little y is still yellow because that big Y masks the little y allele, giving us a yellow phenotype. And then little y, little y is blue, the recessive phenotype. You need two recessive alleles for that. Gray feathers are dominant to orange, so big G, little g is going to be gray as well as big G, big G. And then little g, little g is going to be orange. All right, for each phenotype, we're going to reverse it, give the genotypes that are possible for this chicken. A red comb, which is the part in their head, big R, is dominant to a gray comb, little r. And then blue body color is dominant to white. So tell me what the possible genotypes are for each of these phenotypes. Ready? So a red comb could be big R, big R, or big R, little r. We could get both of those phenotypes from those two genotypes. And then to get the gray comb, we need little r, little r. And then blue body color could come from big B, big B, or big B, little b. And white body color could come from little b, little b. All right, let's put it all together with some Punnett squares. Blue the raptor met Charlie raptor at a dino dance. All hypothetical here. Of course, in the Jurassic Park movies, they're all female, so this doesn't make any sense, but we're just going to pretend. Charlie is heterozygous for his green stripes, but blue has blue stripes. Create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that would result if blue and Charlie had offspring. Go ahead and take out some scratch paper and try it on your own, and pause the video, and then hit play when you're ready for the answer. Here we go. So we know that Charlie is heterozygous for his green stripes, so that makes us assume that, that green is the dominant allele, so that's going to be a big G. And then to get blue, we would have little g, little g here. So if we put it together in a Punnett square, we put one of the parents on one side, another parent on the top, and then we drop down each of our letters to get the following results in our Punnett square. Now it looks like out of the four possible combinations, two of them can be big G, little g, and two of them can be little g, little g. So what are the chances of a child with green stripes? Well, let's look at these phenotypes. Now big G, little g would give us green, big G, little g would give us green, Little g, little g would give us blue, and little g, little g would also give us blue. So two out of four, or if we simplify it, one out of two, or 50%. And then a chances of a child with blue stripes, it's the same, two out of four, or 50%. Okay, that was just a very basic practice of some Mendelian genetics, simple inheritance. So I encourage you to go practice more, find some more practice problems, do your homework for class to really get the hang of it. Tomorrow we're doing non-Mendelian genetics, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any days of the 30-day biology study challenge. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.